hip hop, but I'm not just in hip hop. I'm a black person in the black community, but I'm not just that. I feel like one thing is people try to minimize me to artists, hip hop, uh, black community. Yeah, I'm always gonna represent that, but I also represent the world. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kyle Conner, and today I will be talking to you about co the phenomenon of covering Kanye West as a music and entertainment journalist. I will be using the acclaimed yet polarizing rapper as a launch point into a discussion regarding the dangers of placing um, artists, musicians, celebrities overall uh, on a high pedestal. The video that I just showed is of Kanye during his appearance on TMZ this past summer, reaffirming his support of President Donald Trump while also claiming that 400 years of African-American enslavement was a choice. Now, regardless of where you stand politically, Kanye's comments were hurtful across the board, especially for African-Americans. This moment, and many more recent, pins Kanye as an enigma within popular culture, politics, and of course, the way that journalists cover celebrities. From the moment he dropped his debut album, College Dropout, in 2014, until the release of 2015's The Life of Pablo, Kanye was championed and cherished by liberal media, especially music journalists. Not only did Kanye's lyrics serve as the, the MO for progressive causes against systematic racism and other injustices, Kanye's abilities as a producer immortalized him within the eyes of both his peers and, of course, music critics. One song that really exemplifies this is the track So Appalled from his 2010 album, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Here, Kanye's maximalist production style augments his fiery lyrics, which criticize the huge disparity between the rich and poor, while also throwing a jab at his good pal, Donald Trump. With these lines, I'm so appalled, spalding ball, baldy Donald Trump taking dollars from y'all. Um, apologies for uh, my poor rapping abilities, <laughs> but these lyrics, among many others, indicates Kanye's disdain toward injustice and in, in his heart for the marginalized. Away from the microphone and recording studio, Kanye's words manifest into actions, or at least manifested. As an advocate for at-risk youth and those struggling with poverty, he and his late mother co-founded Donda's House in 2005 a charity whose goal was to reduce the number of dropouts by teaching at-risk students how to write and produce music while also improving their academic abilities. To all music critics and pop culture journalists alike, Kanye was nearly impervious to anything that would be considered incriminating to his seemingly untouchable image. Even when Kanye was asked to imagine and sympathize with how Chris Brown felt when the image of Rihanna's battered face surfaced on the internet, or when he vouched for Bill Cosby's innocence following his out the rape allegations against him, he was pardoned and forgiven by most due to his, his proposed musical brilliance and, and, a, and his impact upon the community. In spite of Kanye's highly questionable choices and opinions in the past, publications like Pitchfork and Rolling Stone, who are by far, who by, who are by far the, the most authoritative voices when it comes to music criticism, routinely gave Kanye's music glowing reviews. Nevertheless, the music industry and media as a whole were still thrown into a tailspin of confusion and disbelief over his comments this past summer. His unwavering support of Trump and questionable comments regarding slavery has sparked the most controversy and backlash he has yet to face, which is surprising to think about. While he at times relishes in this hate and criticism against him, as shown in these lines from the song Feedback off, off uh, The Life of Pablo, I can't let these people play me, name one genius that ain't crazy. His words of late have had a negative impact considering the polarizing policies and stances implemented by the current administration. If you simply take the words from TMZ reporter and lifelong Kanye fan, Van Lathan, the man who directly and unabashedly deconstructed Kanye's rhetoric on live television, you can see just how deeply the rapper's careless words have impacted individuals. And here's the video. I'm appalled, and brother, I am unbelievably hurt 
by the fact that you have morphed into something to me that's not real. That's the way I feel. Stand on all the coffee tables you want to stand on. Say whatever you want to say, but don't throw a stone and hide your hand like the rest of us are just going to swallow it. Yay, be yay. I'm off it forever. Do you. But remember, the life that I live is as a real person, an actual person. So, as Van Lathan expresses his disdain toward the rapper's choice of words and lack of ability to live in reality, he mentions to Kane that there are consequences behind everything that he has said and continues to say due to his status, his significance as a cultural icon, and due to his impact on his community. But that part about him has changed. By disregarding the history of racial injustice aimed at those he once tried to speak for, fans and music journalists alike felt and continue to feel betrayed by this man. While those who reacted to Kanye's behavior like Van Lathan in sadness and negativity deserve to be upset, the level of surprise and fascination that has followed is something that we should as journalists try to avoid. In order to remain unsurprised by the flawed tendencies of our heroes and icons, we have to moderate our expectations and fandom toward individuals like Kanye. So why do fans and media continue to view and worship him as some unblemished godlike image? Well, we tend to idolize those who the media deem as, ma as a mastermind, prodigy, and of course, genius. While Kanye often considers himself as such, alongside rap god and of course, Jesus, he himself is not a savior for anyone. Unfortunately, the media, namely music journalists, have fed into the self-righteous behavior expressed by Kanye over the years, especially now. Prior to Kanye's antics, music journalists pushed the, the rapper upon a towering pedestal along the likes of Prince, Michael Jackson, and of course the Beatles. In fact, his platform was constructed so high that it was nearly impossible to dethrone him from a savior-like complex. As a result, fans and music listeners bought into this polarizing hype and in inevitably placed their own self-worth into an individual who always seems to be on the verge of self-destruction. When you consider the cult-like fascination that has followed Kanye from the beginning, the, ra the rapper was destined to fall. Because you know what they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. While Kanye is a stark and special case of our heroes gone awry, he is a mere example of our troubling fascinations. There are many instances, albeit less extreme cases, where consumers alongside the media were completely shaken by the actions of an individual, a celebrity nonetheless. This leads me to my next point that entertainment journalists have a flawed mindset of separating the art from the artists. We see it all the time, not just with Kanye. Oops, sorry. While far worse than anything Kanye has been accused of doing or saying, director Woody Allen is an example in which media outlets and film connoisseurs were too shocked to come to grips with. With a deep history of allegations and sexual manipulation levied against Allen, it took nearly 25 years for the media to get over the initial shock and denial as a result of the Me Too movement brought on by the Harvey Weinstein scandal. While you still have individuals who say they do not support the artist as a person, rather the art itself, music media outlets have become intentional in pushing against the rhetoric while calling for consumers to not support the art of abusers like Alan, like Weinstein, um, like comedian Louis C.K., actors Kevin Spacey, James Franco, and of course rappers XXXTentacion and Takashi69. Although the individuals I mentioned have actually committed crimes and have hurt people upon unimaginable levels, the case of Kanye should be approached under a similar lens and should force fans and music journalists like myself to ask, when is it time to stop separating Kanye from his personhood? Kanye has almost always made great art, so much so that it is extremely to let go of this self-proclaimed genius. Personally, I had to take a step back and remind myself, while I am a music fan, I am a music critic and journalist first and foremost. So I should seek truth in all that is beautiful and all that is righteous. When writing a glowing review or a feature of a person or artist with stature, it is easy to fall into the trappings of avert of admiration and even idolatry. So in situations where artists and celebrities blow up into godlike statuses, it is the job of people like myself within the entertainment industry to temper expectations placed upon individuals like Kanye, to shorten their pedestal in order to avoid, in order to avoid disappointment. 
Whether we like it or not, our heroes, role models, and favorite artists will let us down as seen through situations through the Me Too movement and of course, Kanye's antics. I would also like to point out that as journalists like myself who cover musicians, filmmakers, and, of, and artists of all minds, it is important to be wary of the language that we use when assessing artists compared to their art. While Kanye's musical abilities may make people gawk in awe and deem him a genius, it is vital that we do not resort to glorifying descriptors for they set us up for disappointment and can balloon a personality into ego-driven proportions. All of this to say, the creative world can and will survive without artistic gods, kings, overlords, and untouchable figures like Kanye West. In an, in an article published by Pitchfork earlier this year, top music critic Jason Green states in his piece titled Kanye West and Why the Myth of Genius Must Die, he says, killing a genius doesn't rid the world of beautiful ideas. It clears the air for inspiration to take its place. Creativity will flourish without a genius because you can leave your mark upon the earth without scorching it. From this presentation, I hope you come away with the reassurance that it is okay to move on from the people that we admire the most. In order to avoid disappointment when the next shocking celebrity scandal surfaces, we as consumers and critics of art have to sometimes expect our heroes to fall and fail and we should let go of them when they've done the unthinkable. Thank you and I would like to open the floor for questions.